Beauty. What's this I'm reading? Review part two. You've never done a part two to a book review before. Let's make history then, my lovelies. So nice, I'm reviewing it twice. Well, not really. It's just kind of a second part, and there's going to be more babbling in this one than there was in the other one, and just that's what's happening today. The thing is, I do my best in book reviews to be thorough. I like to hit the points that really matter. In fact, some book reviews that I record are like 30 minutes long, and I have to just cut stuff out because I babble. But, you know, sometimes it makes me a little sad that you miss all the babbling in between. Because sometimes in that babbling, I actually say something kind of significant. I think. And I loved The Mark of Athena so much that I'm doing this video. So here's all the things that I wanted to say but just didn't make the cut the first time around. For instance, there was a lot of defending Jason Grace as a character. He gets zero love and to me that's just obnoxious. And I get multiple reasons which I feel are all incorrect. But of course everyone's entitled to their own opinion. Like for instance, people say he has zero faults. What? Prideful. Overly reserved. Insensitive. Arrogant. Oblivious. Overly obedient. Not a risk taker unless someone tells him to take a risk. Does that do it for you? Aha, says you. You think Jason has flaws. That means you don't like him. No, says me. Recognizing a character's flaws isn't the same thing as excusing them or hating the character. In fact, if you think any of the characters in this series are without flaw, I challenge you to message me. I will give you a list. I can make a list for each one. You know what? Back to Jason. I think it's just high time people stop hating on Jason Grace just because he's not Percy Jackson. It's, it's time to let that go. And saying Jason is a pointless character is kind of like saying Rick Riordan doesn't know what he's doing. And going by Rick Riordan's track record, I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. So I wanted to address a couple questions I got after I posted my MOA review. Just really quick, because they were things that I wanted to mention, but I didn't. Like, you guys have asked me if I think Nico still holds a grudge against Percy. No. I feel like Nico's pretty much made peace with all that stuff at this point. Did I feel like Percy was a different person in this book? Like he's not the same character as he once was? No. Percy Jackson is Percy Jackson, and other than necessary character development and, you know, seeing him through a different POV, he's still Percy Jackson. How did I feel about the part where Piper said Percy was unimpressive compared to Jason? Wow, I can't believe how many times I got that question. You guys are so sensitive. It's like you're just looking for a reason to hate Piper. First of all, come on. You know that's not what she meant. She's not saying Jason is the bestest and Percy Jackson is useless dirt. Jason is her boyfriend. I would certainly hope that she's more attracted to and impressed with him. I think that's my biggest issue with some of you guys. We're three books into the series and you still haven't given the new characters a chance? Not all of you, of course, but way too many of you. There's no need to compare characters to characters and Greeks to Romans. You're as bad as Octavian. Let's make our peace with the newbies and go slay some giants. Oh, and after my review, everybody wanted my opinion on the whole Jason Reyna situation because apparently there's a Jason Reyna situation. He should have apologized to her. He was rubbing his new girlfriend in her face like a jerk. Shh. Calm down. Answer me this. Between Reyna introducing things to the Greeks and, you know, Leo making New Rome explode, when exactly did Jason have time to sit down and chat with Reyna? I really hope that you didn't just say while well, they were eating together in your head, because that conversation in front of all those people? And I know I'm going to get in trouble for this next question, but it has to be asked. Why exactly does Jason Grace owe Reyna an apology. I love Reyna. I do, but seriously, guys, think this through. I'm so sorry, Reyna, that we never dated because I don't like you that way, and I fell for another girl and dated her. Sorry. You guys are acting like he cheated on her. I think some of you were so obsessed with the idea of Jason and Reyna that when it didn't happen, you got mad at Jason. I love Reyna, but the truth is Jason had every right to walk into New Rome with his girlfriend. And although, yeah, he owes her a big handshake and a pat on the back and a thank you for helping out with New Rome while he was gone, he doesn't owe her a big fancy breakup speech because they never dated. What do you think of Jason Grace? I think he's awesome and I don't think he owes Raina an apology at all. There you go. The smartest person well, I know, ladies and gentlemen. Shut someone down and we're like, I'm sorry, I don't like you. <laughs> it always comes back to Jason, doesn't it? I just, I, I can't take that. Jason has every right to be with his girlfriend. 
it's his girlfriend. And yeah, it's kind of sad that, you know, Reyna had all these affectionate feelings for him and he didn't return them, but that's it. He really doesn't have anything to apologize for. Anywho. Oh man, so many things. I'm really excited for the next book and I'm wondering if we're going to get a POV from Nico. That would be great. I also get a lot of how do I feel about Hazel and Leo, but I mean, I don't know. I see more friendship-like chemistry in them than I see like chemistry. I mean, there might still be some tension later, but I don't think it's going to lead to anything serious. It might, but I, I just don't think. It just doesn't seem that way. And Leo's a cool dude. I don't think he would swoop in on someone else's girl. I mean, come on. Frank and Hazel are adorable. Yeah, I realize this entire review is kind of about relationships, but I just had so much to say about them. It's weird to me that people criticize them the way they do because it's, it's Rick Riordan. He does know what he's doing. I mean, people are acting like he doesn't know his own characters. Let me let you in on a secret. He does. Oh man. But so many great things. Like, things I didn't get to mention. I really liked the part where all the girls talk to Aphrodite, and Aphrodite's like, I made your love life interesting, right, Annabeth? And Annabeth's just like... And then I liked the Fort Sumner, and I liked that showdown between Reyna and Annabeth that shows how alike they are, but, you know, there's also some contrast there. I really like Reyna and Annabeth's, like, you know, character chemistry. They work well together, and I can't wait to see more of them together. And oh my gosh, the big battle! In Camp Half-Blood. The big battle in Camp Half-Blood. If a battle happens, that is. Either way, the Romans are coming to Camp Half-Blood, so that's kind of exciting, right? You know, they might be there to destroy it to rubble, but still, welcome to Camp Half-Blood, Romans! And then you guys asked me what my favorite part of the book ever was. Well, there were a few. First of all, the big fight between Jason and Percy. And then there was when Jason and Percy were fighting together and there was that storm cloud. I just imagining that in my mind was so epic. I don't even like to use the word epic, but I just epic right there. That was epic. And then I don't know why. I, I just really liked the part when Octavian and the other, you know, eagles were circling the girls and Annabeth took her dagger and threw it into the ocean. And Percy just... <laughs> You dropped this. And then my final favorite part. I don't know. There was a lot of good stuff. I really liked Leo when he went down into the, uh, whatever that place was. I'm drawing a blank. And, you know, activated all that stuff. Doom, doom, doom. Who is it? Valdez! Valdez who? <laughs> I love you, Leo. Well, anyway, that's basically all I had to say. I just had stuff to say. Oh, such a good book, such a good book, such a good book. It's been a few weeks and I'm still not over it. So, yeah. Mark of Athena. Huh. I don't want to wait another year for House Hades. <laughs> Percy Jackson fangirl problems. Jeez.